Hello everyone, welcome back. So uh, in the last video we discussed about two sample t-test independent. So now let's discuss about two sample relational t-test. two sample relational t-test. Great, um, I'll assume two samples again. So um, two data distributions. For example, let's say, let's take an example of your Red Bull. Red Bull, energy drink. So, um, well, it's not really energy drink. It's a high caffeine which cheats your brain to make you a bit active. So I want to uh, measure or statistically uh, uh, prove that Red Bull really makes you active. To do that, we need to have some kind of measure. I'm going to take a response test, response time test. So there's something called as response time test, response time test, or simply uh, it could be also reflex time. So let's say you are driving on a highway and suddenly uh, a dog actually came in before you you're driving in a very high speed right so the time you see the dog and the time you apply the brake there is a time lag all right and this is called as reflex time or a response time it really matters because a fraction of seconds delay in this reflex time makes a difference between whether you're hitting the dog or you're able to stop before uh, hitting the dog so or prevent an accident so response time it really becomes important when you are doing a critical operations. For example, you are a, a flight, uh, you are a pilot driving a aircraft, or if you are working in a critical uh, operations where a fraction of seconds matter, and um, uh, even the train drivers go through a routine response test. In the response test, you will have several buttons, which is very known. Like you have a buzz, you have an apple, or something like that. It's a very simple one. You see a picture and you press the button and the time delay between seeing and pressing is being captured and a bunch of uh, questions being asked and they can average of it it becomes your response time is usually in your uh, in, in milliseconds okay so but in, in 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 here i'm going to take it as a centiseconds so i'm gonna give i'm gonna pick five people volunteers and do um uh, uh, experiment Okay, because I'm going to conduct an experiment. So before giving Red Bull, so I call this data set as before Red Bull or B, I'm going to capture the response time. So they go and attend the test and we get the response time, average response time. So I'm going to take this response times in centiseconds because 20 seconds is two digits, 100 centiseconds becomes a second. Milliseconds is three, three digits, so I'm going to take centiseconds. Response time in centiseconds. Okay, so response time in centiseconds and um, say first person has a 45 centiseconds response time, 53 response time, 66 response time, uh, 42 response time and then let's say uh, 57 response time. These are the different response times of uh, five different people at taking the response time test. Okay, and then uh, we have given Red Bull to all of these five members and then we have performed the same test one more time after 30 minutes. So it takes some time for the Red Bull to, to make you active and uh, let's give some credit to Red Bull because it, it really makes you active. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so the response time after Red Bull has reduced, let's say 35. So I'm just cooking the data. So if you really do it, then you have real data and you can do better predictions. So these are the response times of the same five individuals. The, the same person who has got the 45 as response time before have 30, 35 as after drinking Red Bull. 53 become 40, 40, 42, 66 is drastically reduced to 35. So Red Bull is acting much faster for the third person and the fourth and five. And it's called as relational t-test because these two data are related. It's the same people 
We have taken the data before the test and we have taken the data after the test. Because it is connected, it's the same people actually before and after. We call it as relational t-test. Okay, you run this relational t-test uh, and then you have data. Now I'm going to simply set up the hypothesis. By this time, you should be knowing what is the null hypothesis. So as I keep saying, null hypothesis equates the data. Can you guess what is the null hypothesis for this? Okay. You could probably pause the video here and try to formulate a hypothesis for yourself and then resume. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. So uh, null hypothesis here is the response time. It equates the data. So we have response time as a data. Response time before and after Red Bull or same. So it's always that's how you formulate your null hypothesis. So I'm going to copy this and say alternate hypothesis or not same. All right. Again, I'm generalizing it or making it a bit easy for you to understand. Right? There are different ways you interpret the hypothesis, but this is the standard way. Okay. And uh, Null hypothesis, alternate hypothesis is fixed. Now I'm going to run t-test, relational t-test. So it's in stats package, say uh, dot t-test, relational. It's actually t-test underscore rel, relational. And say before Red Bull and after Red Bull, run it. Your p-value is actually, how much you get? P-value is equal to 2.6%. So again, you could actually pause this video and conclude things by yourself and then resume. I'm going forward. So P is much less than your 5%. So we reject null hypothesis. When you reject null hypothesis, we accept alternative. What is alternative? It says response times are not same. Response times are not same. So the response times are not same, which means Red Bull is effective. So it is actually altering your response time. All right. If you want to know whether it is increasing the response time or decreasing the response time, you look at the uh, 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 statistics or a uh, statistic or a T value. T value is positive. So T value is positive, which means before response time is, is statistically satis, satis Statistically, sorry, statistically um, greater than greater than um, after Red Bull response time, before Red Bull res response time. So, if the response time is more, it means slower. So, before is more than after, which means after is less, which means Red Bull is is making people more active so that concludes your research and that really helps red bull to sell more red bulls because now you statistically proven that red bull is making people more active this kind of research is done for most of the food and health related things and this is very standard way of doing things and we use relational t-tests for that hope this example helps you to understand what is relational t-test one of the highly used uh, tests for uh, you know, proving or disproving a phenomena before and after. And it's also a parametric testing. I haven't done the skewness and kurtosis, but generally you have to do the skewness and kurtosis to prove that it is normal or it is a Gaussian distribution to perform the two sample relational t test. All right. So hope it is uh, helpful in understanding this t test, relational t test. If you like this channel, please subscribe. And uh, the next video, we look at. ANOVA test. ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.